I just don't get. And I talked to, uh, when we did the taping with Mike Tyson, uh, he talked some about this. The no sex before a fight thing, like. It, it's different for each fighter, but a lot of fighters are affected by it, including myself. And you're sure this isn't just all mental? I'm sure, 110%. I, I'm not, I, I don't believe in placebo. I have to experience things for myself. And you notice that has a positive impact? Yeah, it's night and day. I've only messed up like on occasion, once or twice, because it's noticeably different and I take more punishment in sparring if I do that. And my coach BJ will be like, did you have sex last night? It, it, you can tell without me even saying anything. He's just slower. He's not as good, he's not as quick, he's not as, as fierce, he's not as aggressive. It's, just, it's obvious to a guy who's been around boxing for, you know, I'm 42, I've been around boxing for, you know, 33 years. So I see it very quickly. And he always comes clean because we have like the whole, you know, full disclosure thing, me and him, we don't, there's no lies, doesn't matter what it is. And ancient warriors, they deprive themselves and they sacrifice certain things before they go to battle. And it's important that Jake sacrifices and deprives himself of certain things before he goes into battle, because that's exactly what this is. This is a battle. That woman game day, you never want to bust no nut on the week of game day. On I the see, week? Uh, especially game day the, the night week? before. Yo. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> the whole week. Yo, that's why I got more energy than players like you. <laughs> you me? I never tired. caught you, because I'm skeeting. <laughs> uh, the night before, I said, yes. hold on, hold on. You guys are football players. Give me your funniest night before the game you had sex. What happened in this game? Tell ain't me. Because I know you had the worst down. game ever. Tell me. It ain't going down. You work so f***ing hard during the week, running these yes. plays over and over. Focus so on. Tell me a story about when you had sex before a game and your game just went out the window. I ain't never had no out the window games. I was, I, I did okay. He was always. See, he was it, an average guy. Nah, so he, he was, was always. Like that. He, he Why everybody want to test my, my, test no, my no. gangster? I respect you, but I'm saying this is the type of that average players do. Like, I'm gonna hit her after the game and get an IV, you heard? And I ain't gonna even get on soft. That's the type of shit I be on. Like, after the game, I'm gonna score two, I'm gonna buy you a go yard, and I ain't gonna come after that. She like, hi, I'm like, don't even worry about it. I'm like, oh, okay. But, but, pay. I talk about the fact that going to sex diet. And for me, my biggest obsession was women at the time. That was my biggest distraction. So, guess what I did? No sex 17 months. You know how hard that is for a guy that that's like his. How old are you? How old are you? I'm 24 oh, years God, old. That's Jesus. insane. I yeah. give you credit. So I go. Now that happens, and I went on a pure, mm -hmm. I'm done. Yep. Don't how, call 17 me. 17 months? 17 months. That's but the point is, I went on that diet. No matter where you are right now, whatever your vice is today, if it's video games, if it's women, if it's drugs, if it's alcohol, if it's whatever you got. It's time to go on your diet and not tell nobody about it until two, three years later when you're winning, kicking everyone's ass. Then you say, here's what I did the last three years. Because mm -hmm. while you're going through it, no one cares. So nothing lasts forever. However, one thing does. Legacy, history, doing something big that's written about and talked about. The only way you and I get to live forever is by the legacy we leave behind with the work that we do professionally, with the kids that we raise, with the relationships that we build, with the companies that we build, with the books that we write, with the articles that we write that make an impact on people's lives. That's one way where you can live forever. Sex is one of the greatest of all forces which motivate human beings. Because of this fact, it is also one of the most dangerous forces. If humans would control their sex desires and transmute them into a driving force with which to carry on their occupation, that is, if they spent on their work one half the time they dissipate in pursuit of sex, they would never know poverty. Do I understand you to imply there is a relationship between sex and poverty? Yes, where sex is not under definite control. If allowed to run its natural course, sex will quickly lead one into the habit of drifting. Is there any relationship between sex and leadership? Yes. All great leaders in every walk of life are highly sexed, but they follow the habit of controlling their sex desires, switching them into a driving force behind their occupation. Oh, okay, bro. So check me out, guys. All right. Now, this video is going to be one of the most important videos that I think I would ever make in my career of entrepreneurship on YouTube and all sorts of things and becoming the most successful, best version of Patrick that he'll ever be, right? And I need to express this thoroughly to you because I need you guys 
to be as great and see as yourself as high, highly as I see myself, right? And basically, bro, to get onto this video, what I really want to express is holding onto your seed is necessary for greatness. Like, it's not even an if, and, or a but. It is 100% necessary. And I really need to explain this to you guys, right? Because I even posted about my last video on Seamer Attention. And I see people in my comments, like, self-doubting. Like, I hope it really is true what you're saying. Like, no, motherfucker. It's true what I'm talking about. So check me out, bro. I put up in that first clip of uh, Napoleon Hill of, you know, he's basically was saying, like, if you abstain for sex and if you stop caring about women and, you know, chasing and bu uh, busting nuts, that if you put one-fourth, not even two, two-fourths, three-fourths, one-fourth of what you do to go chase women and shit into your career path, there will no, there won't be such thing as po poverty. There won't be such thing as poverty, bro. And this makes 100% true. Like, this is 100% true because as men, we chase sex. I, bro, I was chasing sex for a long time. Now I'm letting this shit flow. But even as I'm letting it flow, I'm still needing to abstain from it. I have to get away from it. Whether I bust or I don't bust, I still want to get away from it just to know that I got to be. This is what it takes to be great. I really need you guys to understand this, right? Because what he's saying is when you're not putting your efforts and you're fighting off urges and shit, right? Is you have all the time in the world to do something. And when I'm saying all time in the world, you will have the energy that it's needed to provide the work that you need to do within your life. And I promise you this, bro. This shit is not cap. It's not placebo. It's none of that shit. This is 100% true. This is what hundreds of thousands years of work that people have been saying. This shit was in the Bible, bro. I'm going to leave some clips for you guys of even boxers, bro. They expressed this thoroughly that... Before a fight, they have to uh, be on steamer attention for a month, two months, at least a month or two months, bro. Be why? Because this myth that people say, oh, well, it's a myth and shit like that. This myth is 100% true. Why do we Why do we feel this good when we're uh, retaining? Why do we feel so disciplined? This is what God has made us do. This is what we're supposed to do. Our bodies are not meant to have casual sex. It is not meant for that. It's not meant for you to be busting every single day to porn, especially the porn. Like, my thing is, I'm fucking bitches. All right, I'm holding off on my uh, sex and shit, but you, you on porn. That, that's even worse. But still, all in all, even if you're having sex with women and all sorts of things, it is not good to uh, to consistently bust. It's not. And I, I'm really into it. I really understand it now because... Throughout my life path, I understand what it, it takes to hold on to your seed. It will make you great. Like, you have to understand when you're holding on to your seed, bro. Let me, let me really explain it to you. When you're holding on to your seed, you have this mass of energy and this mass of, like, just love. Like, you want to do something. You need to do something. It's doubled than when you're regular. You're busing uh, maybe once, twice a week, three times a week. If you're busing every day, you're not going to have that urge to really go get it, you know? You understand, like... I understand about discipline. I really know about discipline thoroughly because all I do ever since I started hitting a gym, I was in the gym five, six times out of the week. I understand what discipline is. I understand truly of um, my day-to-day -day life of waking up four in the morning to go to work. I understand that this is necessary. I understand the game. This is another checkoff on the uh, on the checklist of what you need to do to be successful. I understand it. People have done this for thousands of years. Monks. If you look at monks, bro. Monks are the craziest motherfuckers in the world. Like, the most self-disciplined. They don't even have wives sometimes. A lot of them don't have wives. They don't have sex. There's no se Understand, there's no sex for these people. There's none of that because their spiritual culture, I don't really know their culture, but I know what they do. I study samurai, swordsmanship, and all sorts of things. These people meditate daily. They're doing the hard shit daily. They are not bussing. They're not doing none of that. And when they do bust, it's a whole different practice of busting up the spine that I'm going to teach you guys later on. But these people are crazy. I don't know if you know about monks, but you can go search up monks, what they do. Bro, these motherfuckers kick trees in fucking concrete walls, bro. And they don't even flinch. You you kick a fucking, yo, you kick, you kick a, a concrete wall. You're crying. You're going to the hospital. You broke your leg. This motherfucker is bashing his leg open and the concrete is begging for mercy. The concrete is cracking open. These people are the most craziest, strongest-minded people in the world that nobody even talks about. Nobody talks about all the, like, you know, the Buddhas and all of this. These are the most spiritual, enlightened humans that exist in this modern day. They still exist. But nobody talks about it. Go look and search up monks and how they live. 
they do nothing but eat clean. There's no chips. There's no candy. Everything is fucking disciplined. Those people are the point zero 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 one percent of people in the fucking world. Where like I seen clips of motherfuckers in, in North Korea. They have their soldiers like fucking. <laughs> like bro, they're getting hit with sticks. They got glass. They're landing on the glass and shit. Cuts all of that. It doesn't matter. Their body's almost fucking invincible. And that comes from their mind. They don't bust. They don't even have sex. There's no such thing as woman in their life. I really want you to understand that. So that we're, you know, we're the, the, the fucking bots. We're considered bots that we're, we're jerking off the porn all day. When these motherfuckers are top tier of the top tier. And under, I want you to really understand this. You might say, oh, why aren't they so successful? This, that. Because they follow a, a, like a rule book of like Buddhism or what, whatever their religion is. And they don't care about money. Because if they were to care about money and really have success in all sorts of other things in their world, th those motherfuckers will be some of the most successful people in the world. They are literally disciplining their bones, whether they like it or not, to punch through brick walls and shit. I swear to you, go watch some videos on Do your research. Really understand that it's all in the mental. And seamer attention brings you to these levels of greatness, of true fucking greatness. Dude, bro, hold on to your seat for a month. Tell me how you feel. I really had to analyze this shit because I've been going through my day-to-day, -day, right? Like I told you earlier, I know about discipline. I know about waking up early, dumb early before anyone goes up, wakes up. I know about going to sleep and going and, you know, doing hustle culture and, you know, sacrificing sleep to make videos and shit. I know all of this. And I balanced it out. And I really understand that when I'm like, I know what I'm supposed to do. My brain subconsciously knows what to do. You get it? Like... So I go to work, and then after work, it's no ifs, ands, or buts of how I feel. Whatever the fuck it is, I'm going to the gym. That If, if this day is scheduled for gym, gym is not skipped. I don't give a fuck. Tornadoes, tsunamis. Oh, this person, you want to hang out? I don't give a fuck about that. I know my body. I know who I am, and my body automatically goes to the gym, whether I like it or not. Like It tells me you have to go to the gym. But when you're on semen retention, your workouts are 10 times better. Everything is 10 times better. I'm telling you. Like... Do me going to the gym, right? Like, yeah, it's another thing. Let's go to the gym. Mm, it's chest day, right? Like, it's like, yeah, it's chest day. But when I'm on semen retention, everything like that, and I think about it, I'm like, holy fucking shit. Like, it's chest day. Like, I'm hyped. I'm amped to go hit chest day. I'm amped to go try to hit a PR. Every day, all your workouts are like this. I'm, I'm not even capping, bro. Like, and a lot of people talk about the front, uh, what, what is that shit? The front line or some shit? Uh, of when um you know after like a month or two you might not be feeling as good it doesn't matter you still keep going you're always if you have one bad day out of the month compared to your shit miserable life of you not doing anything that one bad day you'll take one bad day over any fucking uh or over you not being disciplined and motivated understand that motivation is like does it even go away when you're on semen intention bro for a while i swear to you bro I'm not lying. This is necessary for pure greatness in order to be great. He said, if you abstain from sex and you hold on to your seed, basically, one if you only if you use one fourth of your mind of from chasing women into a business or to what you do, there will be no such thing as poverty. No such thing. Please understand that. And nobody like if you watch these videos, you now know. In order, fuck everything else that I said in this video. I need you to understand this one sentence that I say right here. This one sentence right here is the most important thing in this video. If you want to be successful, you must be on semen retention. That's it. You will be great if you're on semen retention. You will feel obligated to go do what you need to do with aggression, everything, everyday thing. And I'm going to get into the rewards. I don't even call them benefits. The rewards of holding onto your seed. All in separate videos. If you guys like that, just make sure to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. But I'm not done here, bro. Let me, bro. I need to get this in your mind. If you want to be successful, you have to be on semen retention. This is one of the rules of key way of life. It's in the Bible. It's in all of this shit. I'm not even fucking lying. I'm going to leave clips. If you guys skip those clips, go back and watch these clips of the boxer saying they had to retain in order to be successful. Of Patrick Bed David. Oh, one of my favorite entrepreneurs. How could I forget him? Of uh, a businessman, of what he did. He abstained 17 months of sex and he made his first million. Do you get this? Do you, like, you have to really understand this because a lot of people really put it into their mind, their mind of self-doubt of like, you know, like, yo, this is bullshit. This is placebo. This is this, that, and the third. No. After a while on retention, you are not as much of wanting to fuck or like, you know, you're not feeling as much of a like, 
an urge to fuck after like you do a month worth. If you do a month worth, you're not trying to fuck as much and you're able to control your emotions 10 times more. That's like one great reward from this shit. Self, uh, self control. So that you really look at things from a different lens of like, yo, what I want to spend more time, do I want to spend three hours going out to eat with this girl, spending a whole day with her and you don't want a girlfriend and you're just like wanting to just fuck truly, you just want to fuck. You start to really analyze and be like, yo, is this person even good for me? Why would I even want to hang out with this person? I swear to you. And you second and you double guess and you're like, man, I'd rather go work on my business. What the fuck I'm doing here? What, what am I doing with this bitch laying up with this bitch? Oh, I busted the nut. Oh, okay, cool. Did I get any money? No. You're lame. You're you're broke. You're still broke. You have no money. You're not doing nothing. But okay, you could say I fucked the bitch. Doesn't mean nothing. Doesn't mean nothing and anything at the end of the day. Patrick Bed David talking about 17 months of abstaining for sex. And me, when I first watched that video, I said, What? I could never. <laughs> I said I could never. That was me being just my down low version of Patrick of lust and all of that, just like telling, like, nah, there's no way you could do that. I know I could do that if I want to. I know I could do that. Like, like it's just like real genuine shit with porn and all this. Once you get rid of all of this out of your mind, you're going to be good. So like, success is waiting for you. Like, literally, guys, when you're retaining, you're not, woman is not on your mind. You're not watching porn, all sorts of things. You have no other choice but to be great at whatever you do. Like, it's not even, you have no other choice of what to go do what you're supposed to do. Like, like. The thing is, I have things that I actively need to do. I'm in the gym, regardless of whatever happens, whether I fap or whatever. I'm still making my videos, whether I fap or not, or whether I do this, that, or I fuck a girl and I bust or whatever, right? I'm still going to do what I need to do. But it's not as mere as so dead focused of just like you're a killer. You're like, bro, I need to make the video at this time. This time to this time, I'm doing this. This time to this time, I'm doing that. And you're obligated to do it. You know when you feel lazy and you're feeling like, nah, I don't want to do this. All this self-doubt goes into your mind. There's rarely any days like that on retention. I'm telling you, this is our superpower as a man. I'm going to leave that video at the end of this video, bro. Bro, this is our superpower that I've really just understood and discovered. And really understood that this is necessary in order to succeed. If I do have sex with a woman, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not 100% abstaining for sex. And that's me being so transparent with you. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm not going to fuck girls for six months and this, that, and the third. And then I go and fuck a couple girls. Like, no. I'm, I'm not going to do that and lie to you, bro. Like, I'll keep it a bean, but I'm not bussing. I'm not bussing. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not bussing. But still, understanding that holding onto your seed is the key and leeway to become something great. I swear to you, just understand, go on semen retention for a month, two months. You will understand everything I'm talking about. All those benefits that people were saying, oh, the benefits are, are fake and this, that. That shit is true. <laughs> it's true. Like I told you about that girl, that story about that girl. This girl came up to me in the gym. She was, bro, she didn't even come up to me. She had some other person come up to me, like the person who worked there. And she was like, yo, that girl over there thinks you're real cute. I'm like, all right, come here, send her. She was, it took her like 10 minutes for her to come. I'm hitting a set and after... After I get done with the set, she's standing there. I'm like, what the fuck? But, like, it took her 10 minutes. She was tweaking. She was scared. Because you're that much pressure. You have so much energy. As a man, you are whole. As a guy, you are really that guy. And all the women and all the other people, men and too, they have no chance but to see and look at you. They have no chance. There, there's nothing else to look at. You are that great. I really need to under... I need you to understand this, bro. This is the leeway. Fuck everything I said in this video. In order to be great, in order to be successful, you must be on semen retention. Thousands of at athletes talk about it. It's not a mainstream thing that people are talking about, but it's like a low-key thing. Boxers retain their seed for two months. Why? Because they need to be as focused and as strong and as disciplined as they're supposed to be. This is what I, we are meant to be as a man. We're not meant to have casual sex. We were never meant for that. We were meant to have one wife. And once you marry, then you have sex with her. Then you are able to like bust and have kids and everything like that. That is when you abstain from it. That That is when you bust nuts. But the modern day society brought us into casual sex. And now hookup culture and all sorts of things. And you know, porn. Everybody's on porn and shit like that still. I, I'm sorry. Like since I leveled up from it, it's like I'm not even thinking of it. But like I know for most guys are struggling with casual uh, of, of watching porn all day or uh, three times a day and i understand that because i was in that boat i was for a while now since i leveled up from the shit is like it's like it's nothing to me I'm, and i i'm going to make videos on for people of like who are still struggling with it. i'm gonna make full videos for that like but bro like 
you have I got to stress this. I have to stress this. There is no fucking else doubt. I feel like God is telling me I'm meant to go do this and I have to tell you guys you must hold your seed. You have to bro, this will make you a disciplined great man. This will make you 10 times the man that you are, bro. The energy, the what you need in order to go and succeed and do everything you're supposed to be doing without taking naps and or anything like that, bro. This makes you so much of a greater man. It is insane, bro. I need to stress this to you. Please watch those clips. Don't skip them. Watch those clips that I said uh that I posted in the first beginning of this video. This is the leeway. This is like a written passage of if you want to be successful. People always talk about like going monk mode, this, down the third. Essentially, what monk mode is, is semen retention and just being as focused as you possibly can. Not spending time with friends and all this, that, and third. But when you're on semen retention, your number one goal is to do what you're meant to do. Your YouTube or your uh, Instagram shorts or your fucking, I don't know what you guys do. Or the gym, for instance. This will help you align your life to your goals and will keep you on a straight path of focusedness. Without you even trying, you will wake up in the morning Dick hard as hell. I'm going to be so fucking transparent. You wake up in the morning. Your dick is 10 times harder than it normally is. And you're wanting to go do what you're supposed to be doing. You're like, man, in the gym. Like, you're thinking, man, it's fucking chest day, bro. Like, I'm lit. I'm making these videos. I'm looking at what I know I'm supposed to be doing. And I get so happy from it. I'm like, man, this is what I need to live for. This is what I do, bro. This is what I do, bro. This is what I understand. I know that I'm going to get the knowledge. I just need to give it to these people. Whether you're struggling or not, I don't care if you're struggling. If you want to be a successful man at any age, whatever you are, you have to be on semen retention. It's a fucking must, at least for some sort of period of time. And you will find out that if you go on semen retention for those two or three months, you find out that's the best two or three months of your life. I swear to you. I swear to you. Because all the urges, all of the, the, the lustful things of this like devilish world, that, bro, fucking all these women, it doesn't mean nothing. It doesn't mean nothing. You, you, you get cool points from your boys. Like, oh, you fucked that bitch? Oh, yeah, yeah, I did, huh? You're still broke. You get no money. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. And I'm not saying I don't do it. But I truly understand this shit don't mean nothing. I know a lot of these things don't mean nothing. This worldly things has made us to think that porn is normal. That porn is normal. Yo, please understand. If you're falling for this shit, you are going to lose. I was just talking. Oh, I was just talking to one of my coworkers, too. We're debating and shit like that about things. And he was like, yo, do you watch porn? Or he was like, like something along the lines. I'm like, all these guys are getting no ass in this and the third. And he was like, do you watch porn? I'm like, no, motherfucker, I don't watch porn. And these two guys that I was debating, they're looking at me like, what? For real? I'm like, it, bro, these guys are 40 years old. I swear on my fucking life. I, I, par I couldn't even lie. I look at them and they're shocked. They're like, for real? You don't watch it? I'm like. No, motherfucker, like, we're not, like, there is so normalized. This is what brings, I'm going to make another video of what porn does to the brain and why it makes some crazy kinks of people getting shit on as a kink and it's, like, normal and it's like, oh, if you like what you like, no, motherfucker, are you shitting on people because you watch porn all day and you have a fucking rotten brain. I'm going to make a video. Please subscribe, bro. I'm going to say this one last time. In order to be successful, you must hold on to your seed. I don't give a fuck. Hold on to your seed for this month or two months. Understand what I'm saying and shut your fucking mouth. And you will be like, okay, I understand. I see passage of leeway of what this is necessary in order to, for spiritual growth, for money, uh, uh, like all sorts of things. Just growth as a human and being the best version of yourself. This is the leeway. No matter what they say, no matter what stupid science study says, this, fuck that. This is why old Taoists and old Buddhas and, you know, very enlightened people talk about this shit. But don't nobody know of, like, retaining your seed and not busting. I'll tell you one last thing. My favorite philosopher, he was, his name is Miyamoto Musashi. He went 62-0 and 0 in swordsmanship, meaning that he had to defeat, he had to kill 62 dudes. <laughs> 62 dudes, bruh. In order to be alive to talk about what he was talking about. He became a philosopher after that. And what he told, what he talked about was training every day and really retaining. And he, bro, there's no girlfriend. There's no wife. There's, there's no jerking off. There's none of that. There's no such thing as that back in the day. These in the 1700s. There was no such thing as that. And he became one of the greatest fucking swordsmen fighters in the world, bro. I'm telling you, it's meditating and doing all the things that you're supposed to be doing as a natural human, going on walks and using your energy wisely on the things that you're supposed to be do. Like you, what, what bro said, Napoleon Hill said in the beginning of this video. If you took one-fourth of what you did 
and of your lusting of women and put that towards your business, there won't be no such, there's no such thing as poverty. No such thing at all. <laughs> So this was one of the most important videos. This might be a little longer video. So if you made it to the end, bro, please make sure. Leave it in the comments that you made it to the end, bro. Because I need to stress this. I actually have to stress this part out of what it means to be successful. What it takes. And I'm going to make separate videos of like, even just like my experiences of why it is to be successful. Why it's necessary. Because even with my boxing, and I did boxing too. I'll tell you all in this video. Fuck it. So I'm boxing, right? I move out here about two years ago and I'm over at the park and I'm reading and I'm meditating and I'm reading a book, 48 Laws of Power, and I'm reading it and, I, and I'm meditating. And after I'm done meditating, I noticed that like across, I'm at the park, across the park was a gym, a boxing gym. It was just open like a trailer park boxing gym. I'm like, I'm like, word, let's go fucking fight, bro. Like I want to, I want to go talk about it. I want to go talk to the coach and see like what it is and everything like that. And it, it was a boxing gym and it was awesome. It was really nice. And it still is. It's still out here, right? So I go up to the coach and I wasn't working at the time. So I go up to the coach and I talk to him and he's like, yeah, it's a free uh, boxing gym and everything like that. I'm like, okay, cool. I could come here for free and train and shit like that. But then I, I like, I go, right. And I'm, I'm talking to this one girl at the time, this, uh, this shorty I just met and shit like that. You know, I wasn't taking her serious. I'm not, haven't been taking women serious. I'm sorry. Like it's what I, I don't want a girlfriend. Right. But like I had her around, you know, we're having sex and everything like that. And I'm boxing, but before we had sex or anything like that, I'm talking to her and I've been boxing for about two to three weeks, right? So it time frame two to three weeks and I'm in the best zone, like element. I'm boxing, I'm going, I'm fighting, I'm, I'm fucking boxing, I'm feeling good when I'm sparring, I'm feeling good and everything. Then I start mingling with her and having sex like every weekend. But I knew this though. At this time, I did know this. And I'm like, yo, I'm busting two to three times a night. I'm like, if I go and spar and shit like that, or if I go and train, my training is not going to be as good. And my training wasn't my energy. All of that stamina was gone, like not gone fully, but like even the will to want to go fight and train. I was so much more lazier. I didn't want to do it. But when I was retained and everything like that, I'm like, yo, I want to be the best motherfucker in this bitch. Real shit. That's how I was thinking. I'm like, who's the best fighter in here? I need to go beat his ass. I swear on my life. I was thinking like that. But then I started mingling with this girl. I was having sex with her like. Every, like, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just, like, wow, and going two, three rounds a night. Bro, when I tell you, like, when I sparred, like, a week after, bro, I got fucked up, like, in my good stomach. One of my, um, one of the better fighters there, he hit me in my stomach, like, with a slight jab, but I jumped into the jab, and it hit my torso, or, like, it hit my liver, and I go down, and I'm on the floor, I'm like, <gasps> like, like, um, like, I couldn't breathe type shit, like, and I, it hurt, like, crazy, like, I couldn't even lie, that was one of the worst pains I've ever been in. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, I know what it's from. I know it thoroughly. Because even back before at another different boxing gym back home, I'm boxing, right? For instance, and I haven't boxed for a while. And I, I was on senior retention for like two to three weeks, right? I go into the boxing gym, right? Check me out. I'll go into the boxing. I'm like 17, 16 at this time. I'll go into the boxing gym and I'm training viciously. Like I'm talking about like, non-stop when the bells ring in the three minute bell of like jump roping i'm still jump roping when the three minute bell of shadow boxing goes off i'm still shadow boxing when the the three rounds of uh, hitting the bag i'm in there i'm the motherfucker oh uh, uh, uh. you hearing my shits move you hearing the connect on the back everyone kind of looking at me and shit and i felt it i feel so fucking good i remember i'm like yo this is the best and i, I start getting pad training right the the coach came and told me he's like yo come let's get some pad training and he's training me on the mitts. I'm so efficient. I'm hitting it way better than I normally do. I'm like, <laughs> right? Shit like that. I'm hitting it. The bell's ringing. The I have the coach telling me like, no, no, no. Take this rest. Take the 30 seconds. I'm I'm literally like, yo, bro, I'm up. Like, I'm good. Then the next round, boom, 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 boom. The 3.30, uh, the three minutes and 30 seconds of a round goes again. And then he's telling me like, nah, take a rest, take a rest. I'm like, fuck all that. I'm ready. Like, bro, the spirit and the energy was, bro. It's truly unmatched. I really need you to understand this. Now, understand this. The day after, right? I go home. This is when I was watching porn. I was like, so I bust like two nuts, bro. I swear to you. I bust like two nuts. The next day I go back, my energy wasn't as like how it was. It wasn't. I wasn't moving how I was supposed to be moving as when I was retaining. And like literally like two, three weeks worth of retaining. I go bust two nuts. That same night, I go to boxing and I'm not like, I'm not moving how I was just moving the day before. 
I wasn't. I'm telling you, this retention shit is 100% true. When I was fucking that girl two to three times a fucking night and for two to three days straight, I would go in and I'm like, fuck, I'm not even trying to box. I'm not even trying to be in there. I'm not even trying to train. I don't feel obligated. But I knew this, that, yo, if you keep doing this, this is what's going to happen. You're going to sacrifice and you're going to lack in your boxing so you have to realize that you got to put one away if you want to truly be great. And I understand that this woman is very hard to shake. It's very is. It's completely hard. It's not even something to, that's funny. A woman is hard to, to shake. The sexual urges and all of that. The sexual desires. But once you do, you are one of the top tiers men in this world. Please understand that. So I just wanted to stress this point to you guys, bro. This Even from my personal experience, I'm telling you, I understand the game. And I know it so much i know it so greatly i have stories even upon this shit i know what it is please understand me what i'm saying it's not cap it's not a lies none of that so if you guys want to watch my last video i'm gonna leave that video right here this video is just as important as this one so if you made it to the end shout out to you bro please leave it in the comment section that you made it to the end and that if, if you like this content let me know but truly i understand what i'm talking about i know i'm dissecting it and i really understand but like I said, I'm going to leave my last video. This video is very important. So check this video out. So please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, bro. And hit that bell notification so that every time I post, you guys get notified, bro. So stay yourself. Stay 300. And whatever you're doing in life, trust me, I believe in you, bro.